This week on TGC News, big boars from Savage, slightly smaller boars from Mossberg, things to go down the boar from Federal, revolving things from Colt, and other stuff. Yes, even other stuff. Tack Pack is an enthusiast subscription service that is focused on bringing you the stuff you need straight to your door on a monthly basis. Every month is different, and you can be met with gun parts, accessories, cleaning gear, or even some bigger and cooler shenanigans. And because you're watching TGC, if you use the code TGC knife, you'll get a free ABKT knife. And if you use the code TGC break, you will get a free muzzle break. Only when you punch them in over at TACPAC.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. A couple quick things before we look at some new guns. First, Patreon has claimed that they are in control of everything we post, regardless of whether or not it's on their site. So we've moved over to Subscribestar because screw that crap. And seriously, if you have your own gun channel and you're watching this or you're supporting somebody on Patreon, you really need to give that another thought because they are not on our side. Link in the description to check out Subscribestar. Also, we have merch again. We've been asked about this over and over again. We've now partnered with a company called Ballistic Inc. to bring you guys a bunch of new stuff. We, of course, have regular old t-shirts, but we also have designs for ladies. We have hoodies. We have some really nice hats. And also, if you grab one of our Gundamentalist designs, all proceeds from those will go to Firearms Policy Coalition. Again, link in the description to check that out. Whew. It's a lot of stuff from TGC going on. Now, how about some news? There is a surprisingly huge amount of stuff going on this week. So Izzy, if you wouldn't mind, fire up the minigun. Savage, fresh off the heels of getting new ownership, has announced two new rifle packages in the 110 series in a big bore variant. The 110 Apex Hunter XP and the 110 Engage Hunter XP. They're both fairly simple rifles. Both come with 22 inch barrels, the standard accu trigger, a muzzle brake for the big bore, and because it's a package deal, they also come with scopes. The Apex comes with a Vortex Crossfire 2, 3 to 9, and the Engage comes with a Bushnell Engage 3 to 9. The cartridge, the chambering, good old 450 Bushmaster. They claim that these will shoot farther and more accurately than a slug gun, and the bullet weights are actually somewhat similar. The Apex has an MSRP of 773, and the Engage comes in at 519. Considering they come with optics, that's not a bad deal. And speaking of bolt guns, Mossberg has expanded their lineup of Patriot Predator rifles with two new models chambered in 6.5 PRC. For those unaware, the PRC was brought to life not that long ago by Hornady and is sort of a big brother to the 6.5 Creedmoor. Did we just become best friends? Yep! The new Predator rifles are fairly similar in features. 24 inch, fluted and threaded barrels with a one and eight twist, and they both weigh in at seven pounds on the scale. The difference is that there is a black barreled action in a flat dark earth stock, or a Cerakoted barreled action in a Strata camo stock. Pricing on these is 455 for the plain Jane and 540 for the fancier camo version. And as far as I've seen, that's one of the most affordable ways to get into the PRC cartridge. Federal has dropped two new types of ammunition. First up, a new version of their plastic-coated bullets called Syntec PCC. These are loaded specifically for pistol-caliber carbines, and it's supposedly optimized for longer barrel lengths, which means kind of slower-burning powders, and then a bullet shape that is supposed to help with feeding in a carbine. Typically, pistol-caliber carbines don't have a feed ramp like handguns do, so that's probably a good thing. The initial offering is a 130 grain 9mm, and that leaves the bore at about 1130 feet per second. Also new from Federal are a few 224 Valkyrie offerings. You done rolling your eyes? 
All right. <laughs> they center around three different bullets. A 60-grain Hornady VMAX intended for varmint hunting, a 78-grain Barnes TSX intended for medium game hunting, and then an 80.5-grain gold metal Berger bullet designed for long-range target shooting. And given my experience with the Valkyrie, I will not hold my breath for the performance being up to par on these. That being said, the 60s come in at an affordable 17 bucks a box, while the higher-end 78s and 80.5s come in at 33 and 36 bucks a box. Those are MSRPs, of course. Colt has a new wheel gun hitting the market. They've been sort of resurrecting guns that were prior wins for them, and this new King Cobra target is another attempt at that. It's a four and a half inch barrel, 357 Magnum with an adjustable rear sight, fiber optic front sight, and a nice set of wood grips. I find it kind of weird that they picked a four and a half inch barrel for their target model instead of something like a six or even an eight inch barrel, but whatever. As long as Colt is on the path to fixing itself, I guess we can consider this a win for them, right? Pricing on the King Cobra target comes in at $999 MSRP. CZ has a new semi-auto 12 gauge hitting the scene. It's called the 1012, and there are five different versions. They all are virtually the same except for the appearances, so let's get into the specs. At the core, it is an inertia-driven action with 28-inch barrels chambered to take up to a 3-inch shell. The mag tubes hold 4 plus 1 in the chamber. The difference between these guns and CZ's older semi-autos is that they are inertia-driven. Previously, CZ was using gas operation. They claim that this new system allows for a wider variety of shells to cycle reliably. The five different models, like I said, are just differences in colors. You have the wood furniture versions and black bronze and gray receivers. Then you have an all black synthetic version or a synthetic version sporting mossy oak blades camo. All of these come in at 659 bucks MSRP, except the camo version, which is an extra hundred bucks. If these things run well, this could be really good value for money. Good semi-autos are often not really cheap, and this puts it right in the middle of the pack when it comes compared to other offerings. Also in the news this week, ADM, otherwise known as American Defense Manufacturing, has come out with a new red dot optic. It seems like everybody and their mom went overseas, found like probably the same manufacturer, and they're all now offering affordable red dots. I'll keep this as short as possible. They're called SPEC, S-P-E-K, and they have 12 brightness settings, 10 day and two night. They have a 20 millimeter tube and an auto shut off feature after 16 hours with a total battery life using a AAA battery of five years. That's pretty solid overall. ADM also makes two different magnifiers that live behind the SPEC called the Flick, and they come in 3X or 5X variants. Pricing on the red dots starts at 369 and goes up depending on the mount you use. And the Flick 3X goes for 369 while the 5X goes for 475. It's certainly not a bad thing to have another affordable option when it comes to optics out there. But I start to wonder, when is the market going to get completely saturated with every freaking company out there offering a red dot optic that is really, really similar to the other ones. And I guarantee that some of them are made side by side in the same factory with different logos on them. It's a really weird time. I'm sure you guys will tell me what you think about that down in the comments. And now, as you guys keep requesting, Patton's Armory. This is a segment where I grab one of my personal guns and tell you guys about it. This bad boy <laughs> is a Ruger Red Hawk chambered in 44 mag. Now this one doesn't have like some emotional story attached. It's actually one that I got for a smoking deal. So this is chambered in 44 mag, has a seven and three eighths inch barrel. I believe it's got these kind of classic wood grips on here. This is a neat gun. I've always wanted a long barrel 44 mag. I was always on the search for a Model 29 from Smith & Wesson, but this uh, popped into a shop while I was standing there getting guns. I was bringing in some guns for some testing or something like that. And a customer came into the shop, said, hey, I've got this Ruger and <laughs> I only want like 50 bucks for it. I don't know what it is. I just want to get rid of it, right? The guy only wanted 50 bucks. I said, oh my God. I said to the guy behind the counter, look, dude, I'll give you a hundred right now if you take it for 50. 
and <laughs> that ended up going a little bit higher. I think I paid 200, maybe 250 bucks for this, and it's worth a significant amount more. The bluing is in really good shape. It's only been shot a few times, uh, including me shooting it, and I love it. 44 mag is a fantastic cartridge, and this is a really, really neat wheel gun to have in the collection. If you guys want to see more of my guns, let me know down in the comment section, like you always do. You know, guys, I've been thinking about getting a hybrid lately. No, not the kind of hybrid you're thinking. The handmade in the USA kind of hybrid with leather and kydex. The kind that is available for just about every popular handgun on the planet. The kind that's comfortable when you put it on and comfortable all day, even if you're a big guy. I might need a belt to go with it too. Crossbreed holsters will definitely check those boxes. And if you use the code TGC15 over at crossbreedholsters.com, you'll get a whopping 15% off your entire order. And now it's time for Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from all over the internet. This time, our questions are coming from our new Subscribestar supporters. First up, Ryan R says, what is your opinion on 350 Legend? Is it here to stay? I think the concept is pretty cool. However, I have some questions that are still a little bit unanswered regarding performance and the actual design. Not to mention the fact that Winchester has done a piss poor job of promoting the round. It seems like they said, here it is, back at SHOT Show, and then they haven't really done anything with it since. As of right now, I still think there might be better options, but we'll see how that all shakes out. Sawyer Van Heck says, do you think the increase in modular pistols is going to be something that all manufacturers are going to end up doing? I think a lot of manufacturers are going to end up doing it. The smart ones will. It's smart because it gives the consumer or the end user, if it's like a military or police guy, an opportunity to set the gun up and tune it to their specific needs just like AR-15s. And in that same way, we may see a standard setup start to appear and like rise to the top, but it's a little too early in the life cycle to know what's going to happen there. I think it might be funny <laughs> at some point in the future to see a non-modular pistol being looked at as archaic. And rounding us out, Fizo XLT says, what should we be doing to prepare for the inevitable shift in political power that will likely result in an all-out attack on the 2A? Well, first of all, nothing is inevitable except Thanos. Trump won the presidency, and everyone thought that Clinton was inevitable. They thought she was going to get the seat. But in terms of what you said, we need to be doing a couple things. First off, getting involved in the fight in some capacity is key. But also, at the same time, stock up on ammo and guns while you can. It's really a double-edged sword. Both things are smart to do in case things go sideways. Ever heard the Dylan Thomas quote, do not go gently into the good night? Yeah, step up and fight before things get really bad. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. What do you carry as part of your EDC? Obviously you carry a gun, but what else? Are you carrying a knife, a flashlight, maybe a med kit? Smart people will carry a med kit. I don't always do, but that's a smart thing to do. Sound off in the comments below. And if you want to ask a friendly fire question, send it to me on theguncollective.com. Now that is it for this week's show. Guys, if you dislike this video, hit that button. If you like to hit like, hit subscribe. Be sure to check out our new merch store over at Ballistic Inc. And we also have a new subscribe star page that I want you guys to check out. As always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.